Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey Houston, we're talking about the external processes that change the face of the Earth. First up, we want to talk about the concept of weathering. Now we've probably heard that term, we've got a cool image over here about how the Earth changes because of this thing called weathering. But let's define what weathering is. Weathering is the breakdown of disintegration of and chemical alteration of rocks at or near the surface. So it's, it's making bigger things smaller. I guess that's the key thing I want you to understand. Bigger things, smaller, and it can involve any change in the rock's composition, and also, it can also just change the size and the shape of the rocks. So we're going to have like two ball games in this weathering. You're going to see there's actually two kinds, one that changes what it is, and one that doesn't change what it is, it just makes it smaller. And so that's the, the two classifications. So it's important to understand we've got two kinds of weathering. The first one is mechanical, and the second one is chemical. Now this video is going to focus on mechanical weathering and the next video we'll talk about chemical weathering. So mechanical weathering is the increase, something that increases the surface area of uh, available for actually a chemical attack. So if you can make it smaller, now this, this may sound weird here guys, you're increasing the surface area by breaking it down, does that make sense? If you think about that, if I've got a big block of stone, right, like I've sort of pictured here over to the, to the left, and if I cut it up, as I've cut it up here, into smaller pieces, the actual area that can now be exposed to the outside world is greater, because this piece right here, if you will, that was attached to this piece right here, and that area was not exposed, it was part of the rock. So when we talk about this, is what you have to do is that if you break it into smaller pieces, you have more surface area. And then you can, so mechanical is breaking it down into smaller pieces. And when we talk about mechanical weathering, there are four kinds of mechanical weathering. Frost wedging, salt crystal formation, sheeting, and biological activity. So let's talk about how these work. They're pretty cool, actually. So frost wedging uh, has to do with water. So water has a really unique property in that when it freezes, it expands 9%. By the way, if you recall back in chemistry class, this is, water is a weird chemical. Not many chemicals, I don't know that any other chemical does this. Most of the time, when a solid freezes, of, of the same chemical, it gets more dense and it shrinks. But water's weird, is that when water gets into the crack in a joint of a rock, but then it freezes, it pushes out. And as it pushes out, it can crack the rock. So ice is a common ingredient in mechanically weathering a rock. We call that frost wedging. So here's a particular image that we can take a look at. We've got frost wedging. You can see the idea the water seeps in and it can make, break the rock and then send it tumbling down. And if we look at this particular image of this rock, this is a classic picture of a frost wedging. It's gonna happen in high slopes. It has to be in a cold place, obviously us in Houston, and we're not gonna see much frost wedging because we aren't gonna happen. So the second kind is something called a frost heave. Now frost heaves are different than frost wedging, but still the same principle of the water being nine percent bitter, etc., etc. But now we've got uh, some land, okay? We've got a frozen layer on top, all right? So this is it's a cold climate. And then ice or water seeps down into here, all right? Boom. And then what happens is, of course, it expands. And then it starts, so like there were like holes in the rock, but now it's down on a, on a level, right? And then we got a tr uh, a frozen later, this is melted water, you got water kind of coming up to the, the middle, this is unfrozen, because as you call, the deeper you go in the earth, the warmer it gets, right? And what happens is this happens, it, it pushes up on the rocks, the, the ice, the expansion, and it cracks and breaks the rock up. Let's take a uh, look at a couple of videos that show this, it's really awesome. You've got these vertical fibers that have grown. See how this is vertical? So the ice is actually growing and it's really pushed up bits of the soil by quite a lot. You can see how tall these things are. So just in that one little bit, it's lifted the topmost bit of soil by about a centimeter. 
Wasn't that cool? Here's a cool image of what they might look like. They, they, here's the frost wedging and see how they, it makes just, oh man, just the consent to see the ice crystals as you dig down, you find that. And that's what pushing up, what's pushing up on the rock. The third kind is the salt crystal growth. All right, so salt gets into water or into a, a crack. Okay, it's all about kind of getting into a crack. And as the salt crystallizes, the salt, like the water, the salt makes the crystals, these little squarey crystals, and they'll push off and they'll expand it. Now, if you've ever had a chance to live in the north, and as many of you know, I just came from Chicago where that's really, this happens all the time. They throw some salt on the roads and the salt does the salt crystal growth expand. They crack the rocks, especially in the, the rocks on the roads. Uh, it's an interesting thing that happens. Uh, and then the last one I think is most cool maybe is sheeting. So this is a huge piece of granite. Okay, this is one of the most famous pieces of granite, maybe in the whole, I mean definitely in the whole world. This is Half Dome at uh, Yosemite National Park. And uh, it's kind of rounded. And the question is why is this in this rounded shape? That's a very intriguing, it's because of the concept of sheeting. The idea is that you have a deep, so granite, as you would call, is an igneous rock, which is a plutonic igneous rock. Pluton uh, means it formed under the earth. And there is an uplift. So something is causing the ground to uplift. This is with plate tectonics, and we'll talk about that later on. And as it pushes up, okay, and this, this is at first it was underground, and then it got pushed up, and now it's exposed. But there is this pressure pushing up. And what happens is, is the rocks at the top, because it, it makes a dome, they feel great pressure, great pressure, and then they start popping. And then they actually fall off in sheets, hence the term sheeting. Another classic example, this is Stone Mountain in Georgia, another total example of what that might look like. Or even in Enchanted Rock here in Texas, we see this same thing. Let's take a look at a couple of videos of sheeting actually happening in, in real life. Everything is flat again. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. Oh. All the way down. This whole seam now is active again. Lots of activity down below. It's still lifting. See that? It just popped right up. I felt that one. Little, yeah, little piece flew into the air. <laughs> yeah, baby. Wow, that was that was pretty cool, wasn't it? So you can actually see it and hear it in action. My gosh, that's awesome. And next, we want to talk about biologic activity. So this picture says it all. Trees can grow between rocks and other biological things, and they will crack rocks. That's what exactly what happened. This probably started as a seed, you know, down here, and he grew up to be this tall tree, and he split that rock in half. It's crazy what can happen. As you can see, that another example, of one of these right here, or uh, here's like a tailing spawn. So biologic activity could also be us humans. So this is this is a mining uh, site. And we dug this stuff out of the ground and we've changed it biologically, we being humans, at a mine and we've changed the shape of the earth and we've broken down into smaller pieces. You might also think of ants. Ants, ants dig under the ground and they, they change the, they break things down into smaller potters. So part weathering is caused by creatures or a burrowing owl in this picture. So humans and other creatures also break it down, whether they're plants or animals or insects or whatever it might be. And here's a classic, the mining. So this is, uh, this is they're exploding right here. There's an explosion as they're, they're you know, putting explosives to, to uh, break the rock up so they can get access it to in the process of mining. So biologic activity plays a role also in that. So remember, there's several ways that we can do mechanical weathering. Remember, mechanical weathering is where you break it down but don't change what it is. In the next segment, we're gonna talk about chemical weathering. Houston, we've got no problems. See you in class.